Hey reader friends, today I have a book for you that is one of our Arkansas Diamond nominees and the title is Giraffe Problems. It was written by Jory John and illustrated by Lane Smith, a couple of really funny guys. Random House in New York is the publisher and the copyright date is 2018. I feel bad about my neck. I do. I can't help it. It's too long, too bendy, too narrow, too dopey, too patterned, too stretchy, too high, too lofty, just too necky. Yes, my neck is too necky. Everybody stares at it. This guy, that guy, him, her, all of them, whatever that is, her again. Ooh. Can you look sideways? Yep. I feel bad about my neck. I tried dressing it up. I've added a scarf, two scarves, a bundle of scarves, a mountain of scarves. I've tried bow ties and regular ties and both. Ugh. I've tried hiding it away. I've used shrubs. I've hung out in ditches. I have stood behind trees. I've spent time in the river. Other animals have necks that just work. I mean, take a gander at this zebra's neck. Stripes always look good. So classic. Uh, quit staring at me. Okay, sorry. Or gaze upon this elephant's neck. Strong, powerful, yet graceful. Hey, stop talking about me. Oh, sorry, dude. Okay. Or glimpse this lion, whose neck is adorned with a glorious mane of flowing locks. I mean, what a sight. How inspiring. Why can't I have a neck like that? Uh, are you always this loud? Sorry. My mom always said I should be proud of my neck. She said other animals would love to have a neck like this. Yeah, right. No offense, Mom, but nobody wants this neck. It is a neck only a mother could love. It all makes me want to hide until the sun sets. Sheesh. Uh, good evening. Oh, sorry. No, I've been admiring your neck from afar. Oh, how I wish my neck looked like yours. I get so much done in a day. Goodness, I can only imagine all the reaching and grabbing and looking around I'd do. I'd accomplish many of my goals for sure. Meanwhile, I'm saddled with this sleep excuse for a neck. Here, watch me stretch it out. Ugh! See? That's about as far as it goes. Pathetic, right? I'm basically neckless. <sighs> Sigh. Uh, you feel bad about your neck, too? Yep. Huh. I'm Cyrus, by the way. Oh, I'm Edward. It's lovely to meet you, Cyrus. Can I tell you something else, Edward? Of course, Cyrus. Um, well, ahem. You see, there is a hill in the distance, which you can surely see from your great vantage. I've stood on that very hill for seven straight days now, staring skyward, watching as a single piece of fruit, a lone banana, 
slowly changed from green to yellow, ripening. I've endured windy nights and unseasonably brisk mornings with very little sleep as I waited and waited, hoping against hope that the fruit would drop before me so I could sample its sweetness and nourish myself in the process. Yet day after day, I felt like such a fool as I stretched my neck toward those greedy branches, only to be limited by my own physical shortcomings. Uh, you want a banana from a tree? That's what I said, yes. Huh. Plunk. Here you go. Whoop. Oh, you did it. You made it look so easy. Munch, 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 munch. Delectable. So that's what a banana tastes like, huh? Mmm, it was worth the wait. Edward, face it, your neck is impressive. It allows you to do amazing things. For instance, you just solved my week-long banana dilemma in 10 seconds. Well, thank you, Cyrus. I think you have a swell neck, too. It's it's elegant and, and dignified, and it works well with your shell. Ah, oh, that means a great deal to me, Edward. Say, do you like bow ties, Cyrus? I'm, I'm not sure, Edward. I have very little experience with them. You look wonderful, Cyrus. As do you, Edward. I feel good about our necks, Edward. Thank you, Cyrus. For once, so do I. Yes, for once, huh, so do I. The end.